Four turtle martial artists team up with a resourceful young woman, battle Therianthropic goons, and save the Earth from an alien's giant robot. And it all happened many years ago in Korea. On this episode of Deja Vu, prepare for shell shock. It was 1987, three years since the launch of a weird, gritty independent comic called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The title had been a surprise hit, and its creators had inked a deal with toy company Playmates for a tie-in line of action figures. But there was a catch. Not entirely willing to gamble on an indie property aimed at adults, the toy maker had insisted on a kid-friendly cartoon series to test the market. So that year, a five-episode TV pilot kicked off the animated adventures of four fierce-fighting, pizza-snarfing turtles and their stoic rat sensei Splinter, debuting shortly thereafter on home video in the feature-length edit Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles The Epic Begins. The experiment was a success. The heroes in a half-shell became a global sensation, and more importantly for Playmates, they sold a lot of action figures. It's not surprising, then, that South Korea's take on TMNT was also produced to sell toys. What's unusual is that it was made to sell bootleg toys. Shin Yun Wan was the owner of South Korean toy manufacturer Popeye, which specialized in cheap trinkets that kids could buy for pocket change. In 1978, Shin took his son to the movies to see Kim Chong-gi's animated Goldwing and he was inspired to adapt the film's characters into a set of simple colored figurines, unauthorized, mind you. To his delight, the figures sold like hotcakes, so Shin began manufacturing other toys based on animated movies. Some were even licensed. But 1980 marked the beginning of a new era for Shin. He had been curious to see how they did things in Japan, so with the help of a local ad agency, he presented himself as an advertising bigwig and secured an invitation to visit Japanese film company Toei. There, he witnessed the collaboration between Toei's anime division and toy maker Bandai. He was impressed with how Bandai's action figures dictated the look and function of their cartoon counterparts rather than the other way around, and he recognized the enormous potential for using movies and TV series as marketing tools. Returning to South Korea, Shin approached Goldwing's Kim Chung-gi and pitched an animated film based around a new line of Popeye toys. Kim was skeptical, but he finally agreed on the small condition that Shin put up the entire budget. The film was 1982's Super Taekwon V, the fourth in the popular Robot Taekwon V series inspired by Japanese mecha anime. Originally, the title Robot was a knockoff of Mazinger Z, but this time it was redesigned to match Shin's new toy. Well, not precisely new. Lacking advanced mold-making technology, Shin created his Taekwon V by reverse-engineering a mold from a combat mecha zabungle figure from Japan. He and Kim then copied the rest of the film's robots from various other anime series. Shin's gamble paid off. Children clamored for the toys. Stores sold out. Beleaguered parents even descended upon the factory in search of the hot items. Buoyed by their success, Shin and Kim collaborated again on Space Gundam V, featuring figures based on Gundam? Nope, Super Dimension Fortress Macross. So by the time production began on Our Friend Power 5 in 1989, Shin had done this several times, even with live action films, as this one would be. But Our Friend Power 5 wouldn't advertise Japanese mechas. It would instead hawk the original 1988 line of Playmates Ninja Turtles. Bootlegs, of course. Except, giant robots were still Shin's bread and butter, so he also made two hero robots based on figures from Bandai's Machine Robo series, including the Battle Suit Power System 5. Oh, and there was also the villain's Ultra Robot, modeled after Baxingar. As you'd imagine, then, the plot of Our Friend Power 5 bears no relation to anything in the existing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles universe, but rather was made out of whole cloth to incorporate all the toys. Examining the handful of -of out-of-context animal warriors, the filmmakers cast the humanoid turtles as aliens and the man-sized rat as part of an enemy race. Note that the American animated series wouldn't reach South Korea until the next year, so local audiences wouldn't have anything to compare this to. The cooked-up story revolved around five turtles, four warriors and a princess, who flee their home planet Battlestar and are pursued by a malevolent race of ratmen to Earth. There, the turtles befriend a boy and his big sister, and together they battle the invading rat army with the aid of a Korean super robot. Pretty standard stuff. 
Providing a tangible link to the toys, the movie's costumes were constructed as supersized versions of the Playmates figures, complete with the fixed grimaces that were an iconic part of their design. However, unlike the official figures or their cartoon counterparts, all of the turtles wear identical red masks. While this was how the turtles were originally depicted in the comics, it was also how they were illustrated in early advertising for the figures. The Battlestar Turtles are instead differentiated by their colored ventral shells. Now, I mentioned the film was live action, but you may have noticed by now that it wasn't entirely. Given the film's low budget, building and photographing all of the robots in space battles would have broken the bank. Instead, the filmmakers leveraged South Korea's animation industry. Nearly all the sci-fi vehicles and effects sequences were realized by a hand-drawn animation, with the film alternating between live action and cartoon depending on the needs of the shot. It sounds like a wild choice, but the technique was already fairly common for South Korean kid vids. Other sequences were created by animating cutouts of film frames, and still others incorporated photos of the toys. Our Friend Power 5 received a small theatrical premiere on August 16, 1989, with the home video available to own the following year. And not only could audiences buy the, uh, official toys, but they could also purchase and play the board game. Speaking of the toys, those proved popular enough to see re-releases over the next several years. And the children who played with them, well, they were none the wiser about the true origins of those warrior turtles. Uh, at least for a little while. Hey, did you know Deja Vu has a book now? It's called How the World Remade Hollywood. Written by yours truly based on years of research and interviews, How the World Remade Hollywood tells the incredible and little-known stories behind dozens of wild remakes and ripoffs. Whatever you think you know about remake exploitation, I promise you're going to be surprised. Get How the World Remade Hollywood wherever you buy books online, or ask your local library to get it for their collection and read it for free. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.